the Niners just created more cap space. They did it by restructuring George Kittle's contract. He was scheduled to make a whole hell of a lot of money, and now his cap number is $9.5 million, which is quite reasonable. Um, they did the same thing with Javon Hargrave. And so next year, if the Niners want to cut or trade George Kittle for any reason, that, and that goes for Javon Hargrave as well, they, they'll be in the Eric Armstead situation where they can do it, but they kind of have to do it as a June 1 move because it doesn't really help. Putting themselves in a tough situation, you'd think the Eric Armstead experience would teach the Niners to avoid this, but maybe they don't care. Maybe they felt, we'll just ask the guy to take a pay cut if we have to, and then cut. I don't know. What do you think about creating cap space this way? I, yeah, I don't think they care either. Um, I think, think care. in terms of Hargrave, I fully expect that, to be honest, because look at who projecting on the defensive line. Who's beyond after this year? It's Hargrave. You need someone to be a constant on that defensive line that you don't have to worry about. Now, you can argue and debate, like, is he actually worth his contract? Like, whatever. The point is, he's still a pretty fine starter. That's, like, mm -hmm. cool. I think most teams would like to have. So, yeah, restructure him. Pretty much locks him in for the next couple of years, right, at least. So, now it's, like, unless, God forbid, you want to do another, like, arm setting. But I don't think that. I think, at least with him, you keep that constant. And, fine, we'll live with it. Because what the odds he actually drops off significantly in a year or two? Like, kind of low, whatever. So, I I'm fine with that. That made sense to me in terms of you have someone there, don't worry about it. Kittle's the one that's interesting because you just went through the light, late portions of your season, not just a Super Bowl where you didn't utilize him. You just view him as like a flexible tight end. Um, excuse me, a flexible offensive tackle who's your check down release guy or like four or five designated feature plays a game, which, you know, he was an all pro this year. You know, he can still play, but there's always still that question like, is he going to maintain it? But you don't use him enough. Um, injuries, that's always a factor with him no matter what. That's the one that's wild to me, the, the killer one. Just, again, because mainly because of use, usage. So that, that one is like, eh. like, now you're kind of putting yourself into that arm set again where you're retracing your steps and you're going to be in the same position where you're asking to take a pay cut or you're going to end up cutting him post, post June 1st again. Kittle has played in 12 career playoff games. Here are his receiving totals, uh, yards. <clears throat> In these games, game by game, I'm going to go through his game log, starting in 2019. 16 yards. 19 yards. 36 yards in the Super Bowl. 2022, 18 yards. In Green Bay, 63 yards. Against the Rams, 27 yards. Uh, last year against Seattle, 37 yards. Against Dallas, NFC Championship game, not uh, a divisional round, 95 yards. NFC Championship game, 32 yards. Now the quarterbacks got hurt. Green Bay, wild card round, a divisional round, 81 yards and a touchdown. What a performance by Kittle. NFC Championship, 27 yards. Super Bowl, four yards. Dude, he's just not a playoff performer with about two or three exceptions. And you're signing him your extent you're restructuring him again i don't know i don't really like it i think it's a mistake i think that's why they're bringing like linkedin rumors and wanting another tight end right more of a receiving threat so you can use kittle more as the same role and bring in a second guy to be that receiver so that way they can run out of those run pass plays out of those run set formations because mm. that's one of the things like that's 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 good to like and not like about the 49ers passing game where if the run game is going fine Cool, we're going to run out of this run play set. Guess what it is? You're not going to know, and things are open. But if you're getting the run stuff, like in the Super Bowl, then it's like, okay, well, now this guy's just a blocker. Can we actually take him off the line? Is the whole is everything picking up? Well, they really need a second tight end to pick it up to really be someone who's like a zone killer or like a man beater or some, some way. So, I, so unless it's going to be something where you find like your tight ends that you brought Braden Willis or uh, Cam Latu – they're probably going to draft another tight end too, more of a, a polished actual receiver. Unlike these guys who were not necessarily, you know, proven like a Cam Latu or Brady Miller, who's barely switched positions in, in the final year or two of his career. You're writing off Cam Latu already? Yes. Shame on you. Me too. All right. Well, look, hopefully the Niners don't get themselves in trouble with these restructures. Uh, 
If you're just tuning in, we talked about the Niners' newest corner, Isaac Yadam, earlier in the show. He uh, played for Fangio, who Brandon Staley coached for Fangio. There's going to be some of those principles in the coverage scheme, and that's why he's here, most likely. He played last year for Dennis Allen and the Saints and had a pretty decent year. So now he's most likely the number three corner unless Ambry Thomas smokes him in training camp, which Ambry's a gamer. Let's put it that way. I'm kind of kind of sick and tired of the Ambry Thomas disrespect. He was a fine corner last year. He was fine. That's what I'm saying. He plays his best on Sundays. <laughs> they benched him, though. I didn't bench him. They benched him. All right. That was telling. <laughs> 